Our house is on fire, Greta Thunberg said at the World Economic Forum in Davos in January this year in 2019. But is that really true? If a house burns, then the firefighters come in one second, then everyone hurries to the rescue, then all forces are mobilized to fight the fire. Millions of people all over the world are now walking on the streets and shouting, fire, fire. The Fridays for Future movement is the largest political movement in the history of mankind. 27,000 recognized and renowned scientists all over the world support the movement and confirm that the threat of climate change is very serious, very alarming, and very urgent. Our house is on fire, but still the responsible people from politics and economy present friendly, smiling, small-scale efforts with ridiculous effect. It's like putting out a house fire with a teapot. So what's the matter? What must happen? And what can we do? This is what I would like to talk here today. Because only if you understand how it's possible for people still to ignore the fire, only then we will be able to extinguish the fire together. Let's start with the fact that the house doesn't really burn. Not yet. A constant glow has been burning for about 40 years. Slowly, our Earth warms up. Every year, a bit more. So slowly that one hardly notices it. And every now and then, a flame flickers up here and there. But the change only becomes visible when you look at large periods of time. That's why it's still possible to ignore the fire even though it's been damned. In addition, the house is inhabited, and there the heat quickly falls into oblivion. And that's where the Schmitz live, with their daughter Anna. And the old Meyers live there too. And the Schröders, but they are always sick. Among them, in the largest apartment, lives the fat Huber. He's very rich. He owns the factory and the bank where Mr. and Mrs. Schmidt work, and he also makes sure that there's always enough coal in the basement so that the flat is always cozy and warm, as especially Grandma and Grandpa Maya like it. He also runs a petrol station where the Schmidts fill all up their cars and their trucks. And then there lives a scientist whom Huber doesn't like at all. For years, she has been saying that it's much too warm in the house, that it rains in at the Schröders and that they're therefore sick, and that the earth as a whole is in a rather bad shape. But above all, she says that it all has to do with the coal, the oil, and the emissions from the cars. Huber says these are shameless lies, and the scientist has no idea. But the scientist does not stop saying these things. And together with many colleagues around the world, she's gathering more and more evidence that she's telling the truth. Now, 98% are sure that CO2 emissions are driving climate change so strongly that the Earth will warm up by more than 2 degrees Celsius by 2050, unless we make urgent changes. And soon in the house, everyone noticed that Little Anna no longer understands the world. Her mother got scared, but her father prefers not to say anything because he does not want to lose his job. Grandpa, Grandma Maya is, can't believe it, also because Grandpa Maya is so skeptical. Schröders are still ill, but they are now politically involved. And Huber is super angry. He would love to kick the scientists out of the house. He just doesn't know how yet. And in this situation, Greta Thunberg suddenly appeared. Our house is on fire, she said. And everyone noticed that this was somehow true. But Mr. and Mrs. Schmidt are so afraid that they prefer not to know anything about it because they don't want to lose their job. Grandma Maya is so exhausted from all the bad news that she just wants to sleep. And Grandpa Maya is very skeptical. He can't believe that climate change is true. And he says maybe Huber is right after all, 
there is still a 2% possibility that the scientists are wrong. And the Schröders are still ill, and politically, they have no new ideas. Huber has devised a new strategy for this. He has put on a crazy clown mask and tells us there's a fun show in heaven. And the people in the house, this confuses the people in the house so much that they don't know whether to laugh or to cry. Anna thinks it's all totally crazy and protests together with her friends on the streets so that the friends, some, that the people have to act and something has to happen. They don't go to school anymore until the adults finally come to a common sense. And the scientist thinks ahead and looks for ideas and solutions. That's pretty much exactly of what we have today. And what are the next steps? Well, that depends on many details. Researchers from my team, from the German Institute of Economic Research, the DIW, have produced four distinct and extreme yet plausible worlds in a scientifically based study. The result was published under the title The Global Futures of Energy, Climate and Policy, Qualitative and Quantitative Foresights Towards 2055. The four scenarios that have emerged are the following. All start on the same basis with the Paris Convention on Climate Change, although with uh, different ambitions. Mr. Huber chooses the red path because he thinks that climate change talk is nonsense, and this is a scenario of survival of the fittest, meaning the Paris Agreement fails, national solo efforts let conflicts escalate. The Schmitz do not want to give up their standard of living in any way. They are also not sure that climate change is right and therefore rely on the technical innovations that is the scenario climate tech in blue. Although the political authorities remain at a standstill, companies are beginning to invest in technical innovations because the CO2 budget is being used up very quickly. Grandma and Grandpa Maya don't want to change their standard of living in any way, and they are banking on the business as usual scenario in orange. Only China and Europe are making progress in decarbonization. There have been a few technological advances, advances, for example, like the carbon capture and storage application. At the same time, public pressure is growing as extreme weather events become more frequent. And the politically active Schröders are convinced of the climate agreement, um, want even more of it, and decide consistently together with young committed people for the green cooperation. This is the scenario in green. There will be a withdrawal from coal, there will be also a withdrawal from fossil fuels, there will be um, a CO2 tax and energy efficiency is increased and renewable energy consistently expanded. In this simulation, all models initially developed relatively in parallel. The models' practical political measures even show the strongest successes by 2025. But by 2035, the curves begin to move further apart. Red is steadily declining, green is rising consistently, orange drops again, and blue rises. In 2045, the same trend is more pronounced, and in 2055, it's obvious. The individual factors that lead also to these kind of developments can be very clearly understood, and you can read also everything in detail. The studies on the web, and you can download it there, including also the innovative methods used by the team. In 2055, we have one of these four worlds. The worst case scenario is the nightmare. Except for Mr. Huber, everyone else is in a bad shape. The earth is contaminated and the house is burning bright. Even the business as usual scenario is not tempting. Although there are few windmills, Anna keeps herself bravely in an organic farm, everyone else is sick, and yes, the house burns with flames. Surprisingly positively, the climate tech scenario develops. 
The new climate technologies has increased efficiency and the energy, the CO2 emissions are limited in the long term, key low emission technologies evolve. Despite all the risks, nuclear energy has also been revived. This helps the climate, but the problem of radiative waste has not yet been solved. The people hope for the next Mars exhibition. Oh well, and Mr. Huber's CEO position has now taken over by Anna. She invests in climate technology and makes a huge profit with it. The Green Corporation is proving to be the hope for the best case scenario. The demand for energy no longer increases, even though the world population is increasing. Renewable energy ensures full supply and also no fully cover all demand for energy. The emissions have completely stopped. The green growth is the established economic model. The Schröders are successful in the vegan food industry, the Schmidt's work in sustainable industry and finance, and Huber's children are active in research and development. And after all, Anna is the chairman of an energy cooperative. Through fair particip participation models, all citizens earn from green economic growth. And what does this mean for you now? Here now? What's to be done? Well, it's so quite obviously, of course, we need the Fridays for Future movement must continue to protest. The worldwide strong Fridays for Future movement has shaken the public and set politics in motion, but that alone is not enough. We need new ideas, new solutions, and a new drive. If we want to put off the fire, we don't have to jump into a fire truck, but we bring, have to bring all our abilities and possibilities together. No matter what you can do, no matter what you know, no matter where you come from, and no matter if you have a plan or not, Get out of your corner. Meet with like-minded people. Get together and exchange ideas. Tell yourselves what you can think of. Every single activity counts. Think, make, build, network, design, get involved. Bring yourselves in based on your abilities. That could be math, it could be physics, or chemistry, or political science. It could also be astrotechnology, IT, law, or economics, medicine, electrical engineering. It's, it doesn't matter whether you are interested in IT or law, econom or economics, everything is needed for the green corporation. It's, it's all about climate policy and economics. It's about CO2 prices, circular economics, and recycling methods. It's about renewable energy, security of supply and storage, and the decentralization of the energy supply system. It's about sustainable mobility, flexible infrastructure, and efficient cooling and heating systems. It's about artificial intelligence and also ecological agriculture, sustainable urban development. No matter what you can do, so much still has to happen in all sectors. Network and develop new ideas. If this succeeds, then it's clear, climate change is a climate chance. Thank you very much.